Hello. Today, I would like to ask you what comes to your mind when you think of South America. It doesn't matter whether it's the Amazon rainforest, the Inca Empire, the beaches along the Atlantic, the amazing football scene, or the music. We can all agree that South America is a very diverse continent. But today, I'll be talking about music, more specifically, the Balanguan guitarist, Augustine Balos. As a classical guitar student who has studied and performed the music of Barrios, I can tell you that he is a musician that more people should know about. So today, I'll be talking about his life, the three writing styles, and how he became popular. So without further ado, the life of Augustine Barrios, he was born on May 23rd, 1885, as Augustine Bill Barrios in San Juan Batista, Paraguay. His father was a vice counsel in the city, and his mother was a school teacher in the community. According to classical guitarist Brian Roberts' video titled The Story of Augustine Barrios, Augustine Barrios picked up the guitar at age seven due to his father, and he quickly became a child prodigy. He was picked up by another guitarist named Gustavo Sosa Escalado, and he encouraged Barrios' parents to send him to the National University of Asuncion, where he studied music and performed his first concert at 18. Then from 1910 to 1930, Barlos performed all over South America in Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil, Argentina, etc. In 1929 is when he met his partner Gloria, Gloria Seban, which is this lady right here. And in 1930, Barlos made the risky move of adopting the persona Nitsuga Mongole. According to Brian Roberts, Newt Hugo is Augustine spelled backwards. Mangale was a 16th century Guarani chief, and Guarani are the indigenous people which Barrios had roots to. And as this persona, he performed all over the Americas, including the Caribbean. But in 1933, he dropped the persona and just went by Barrios Mangale. In 1933, thanks to Guarani diplomat Thomas Salomini, Barrios was able to perform in Europe and Netherlands on Radio Deutschland, but unfortunately, he did not perform in Spain due to the Spanish Civil War. When he arrived back in South America, he suffered two heart attacks, one in Guatemala and another major one in Mexico. He never regained strength, but he did become a professor at the Conservatory, National Conservatory of El Salvador. He was reached by RCA Vector Records, which is a record label in the United States to maybe record his music, but sadly, Augustine Barlow died on the 7th of August, 1944. So his dream of performing in the United States never became a reality. Moving on to his writing styles, master student, Anthony McKenna Ward, wrote his thesis about Barlow entitled Augustine Barlow Mangala, a study in the articulation of cultural identity. McKenna Ward explained that Barlow's culture played a vital role in his music identity through his composition as well as stage presence. This is substantiated by John Cesar's video, Another Classical, classical Guitarist, by his video titled The Three Wild Stars of Augustine Barrios, and it could be categorized in imitative, religious, and folkloric. In the imitative style, Barrios is influenced by the composers of the Romantic Era, namely Frederick Chopin, Robert Schumann, and Francisco Dallega. Some examples uh, Barlos' pieces include Variaciones sobre un tema de Talega, Julia Florida, and the first movement of La Catedral. In the religious style, Barlos was influenced by his religious upbringing. The two most famous pieces are the La Catedral movement and his final song ever written titled Una Limosna por el Amor de Dios, which is titled A and on for the love of God. Finally, his folkloric, which is his most written style, there were pieces inspired by the folk music of not only Paraguay, but also South America. Other South American countries, from Chile to Paraguay to Uruguay to Brazil, and even his own Guarani uh, roots. We went on to how Baluch became famous. In a 2017 live BBC interview, John Williams, who is a one of the most famous classical guitarists, 
mentioned that in 1969, he had a medical student from El Salvador called Carlos Rodriguez Baez. He came to London with a collection of Barlow's manuscripts. William said that he thumbed through the music, which for him was a, quote, an absolute revelation. So in 1977, John Williams released an album called John Williams Plays the Music of Augustine Barrios, which exposed millions of music, exposed millions to the music of Augustine Barrios, and essentially that made Augustine Barrios a household name in the classical guitar community. In conclusion, I went over Barrios' life, his three main body styles, and how he became famous. So I would like to end with a quote from another master student called Rafael Paleo. This is taken from his thesis, Augustine Barros El Indio Mangala. Translated from Spanish to English, it reads, Augustine Barros was the artist at his finest, a guitar sorcerer, a prophet, a precursor, whose art sprouted and captivated countless guitars, producing successors, worthy of a singular heritage and inspiration. Thank you.